Hello there gang, and welcome to Displaying Moral Behaviour. There's a whole bunch of good news out there, so let's talk about it. Kicking things off with a segment that we featured on the last episode, we've got full reveal pictures of the Necker Tree Pusher Earl Sinclair. I'm not going to linger on this because I did speak about him last time, but now we've got a whole bunch of pretty pictures to go with it. He's currently available right now at Target. That was a funny thing. After the episode went live, a bunch of people messaged me and they were like, yo, Dave, we can, we can see this here in front of us now. <laughs> he, he's out there. So that's cool. You can go and pick him up. And actually, while I'm talking about updates from the last episode, got a whole bunch of pictures of the Heat Boys Donatello, which looks even better than the initial one they showed. Just, ah, it's lucky he's so expensive that he completely prices himself out of my market. You know, if he was a fraction cheaper, I'd be like, ah, oh, maybe I can do it, but it's too much. So I'm like, you know what? I can resist that. So yeah, these two guys, a whole bunch of pretty pictures. Dang, looking at this. It's great being a toy collector. There's literally something for everyone. Both of these things completely different and totally awesome. As some of you might know, I've done this new thing where I'm filming good news live for the channel members. So if you want to be a part of the show, you can be by getting a channel membership. Then you can watch the Model Behaviour live streams while I'm filming this. You can chime in with your thoughts and opinions and usually corrections, which are very much appreciated, and be a part of the show. Then at the end of this episode, I'll answer any member feedback as well. Just a little way of saying thank you and bringing this into a bit more of a community kind of thing. Because honestly, it takes a community to raise a child. And I am still quite the man-child. From CY7 Toys and Per Se Toys, Never heard of these companies, but they are combining and giving us this Dark Knight Batman figure. I guess based off the Grim Knight version of Batman? I, I, you know me, I don't really know my Batmans, but I recognise this look from the McFarlane figure, from the Dark Metal kind of time frame. Whatever the inspiration is, the delivery of this... Dang, it looks pretty! Oh my goodness! I know Batman swears never to use guns, but looking at how badass he looks with them, you know, maybe... Maybe you could use them a little bit. And the important thing here is that this is 1 12th scale. All of these figures that I'm assuming are not in the Good Lord scale, and then they're coming out as 1 12th. This looks beautiful. So this is obviously a Chinese figure, so you're gonna have to check out the old import sites and this and that. Check out the Model Behavior Facebook group as well, because when Eric reports this news in the Fulham report, he normally does post the links as to where he finds this stuff as well. So you can go check it out, because looking at these pictures here, Oh my goodness, again with the Punisher head swap. Take off the Batman head, stick on Punisher. You got like night stealth tactical Punisher. Oh my goodness. Possibilities are endless. Right now, Joe Fest is taking place, one of the biggest action figure showcases in the world. And dang it, a lot of people, a lot of toy producers have been cooking lately. One of whom is Ramen Toys. Friend of the show, Ace from Ramen Toys, is there exhibiting his latest wares. And there's a whole bunch of very, very tasty pieces here. There's one new line that he's doing called Titanium Warriors. This, this looks great. So it's an original creation, but with strong creative roots from back in these 80s sci-fi classics. I like what I'm looking at here. Then they've also got the Ramen Racer post-apocalyptic version on display. A whole bunch of the gull wings as well. Too many for me to list individually, but essentially Ramen Toys, they're in the kitchen and they're making some magic. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what else comes out from them for the rest of this year. I, it's still the MUSK sewer set, sewer set. That's what I want most. That's, that's what I want to see properly revealed. Loyal Subjects have shown off more of their San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Turtles figures, but they've not really shown them off very much. We only have one picture of each of them in this very dark, shadowed, angled box. So... Make of that what you will. I thought the Red Foot Ninja, the Elite Ninja, was kind of an anomaly. But no, they're just presenting all of them like this. So I guess if you want to see them up close, you're going to have to go to San Diego Comic Con. That's, that's the full exclusivity there. You can't even get a good look at it unless you travel to San Diego in person. Well, hey, you know what? They want to test their audience. See how much you guys want to see these. Me personally, I'm fine. That'll do. <laughs> You once brought hope. Now I bring justice. 
Justice is blind, not heartless. Starting tomorrow are pre-sales for the Mafex Doctor Fate from the Black Adam movie, which I think everyone has already forgotten about. That's why I do feel bad for companies like Mafex that make characters based on movies that take so long to get produced that by the time they hit store shelves, the hype is kind of gone and sometimes you, you bet on the wrong horse. And I can understand putting your money on a rock-led DC superhero project, but I don't know how many people are clamoring for a Pierce Brosnan Dr. Fate figure, but you know what? There probably are a few hardcore loyalists and you guys out there, God bless you. God bless you. Because you're giving Pierce Brosnan some money as well, and he's the quintessential James Bond of the 90s, and they must have paid him some money to get his facial likeness, because they've done a really good job of recreating that. So this is, i got to say, a really good-looking figure for a, a movie that kind of came and went. But if you're one of the loyalists, then you wanna go, you're going to want to get hold of this. I'm not going to retake that. Manga fans, gird your loins and prepare your wallets, because if you liked the Figma version of Gyver, I was gonna try to say Bio Booster Armor, I had to work my mind backwards, reverse engineer the name Gyver. If you like their Gyver, then get ready, because they're doing an extreme gigantic mega version, which I'm guessing is one of the alien, what were they called, the Mutronics, M Mutroids? There were so many name swaps from the Japanese to the American to the European versions of these movies and these franchises, it's hard to keep, hard to keep track. Boy, maybe I should retake that one. Now, you know what? We're committed now. It's hard to follow, but whatever this guy is called, he, he looks like he's going to be awesome. So hopefully more colourful, painted, pretty pictures of this to come. Can I I'm awesome. Again with the Comic-Con exclusives, NECA this time showing off a two-pack of their original design Eastman and Laird Ninja Turtles. This is wonderful. We've seen a lot of kind of OG looking turtles recently, but this is the most perfect realization of the initial silly bonkers sketch that was done as a harmless little joke. It's amazing what spawned from that. What's kind of funny is that this is only one two pack. And of course, you know, <laughs> I don't claim to be some, some fancy city scientist, but I'm pretty sure that there are four turtles. So, I guess there's going to be another one at some point, but it hasn't been mentioned or referenced anything here. It just says Ninja Turtles 2-pack. So maybe they're saving it for a different con and a different exclusive. I don't know, but I'm certainly intrigued because these look like a lot of fun. Actually, another benefit of filming this in front of a live audience is that I can get corrected as I make mistakes, which is nice. Uh, just posted out in the chat was that this pack comes with the two other heads of the two other turtles. So it's simply assuming that you're gonna buy two two-packs and then you can put the heads on different ones and it it, it seems like just, just a four-pack with extra steps, to be honest, and a few leftover heads. Nonetheless though, at least that answers the question for me. You do get four turtles, but only two bodies. So you gotta buy two two-packs. That's, yeah, extra steps. Ladies! Also from King of Fighters, this time the 98 version, we're getting Orochi Yashihiro. <laughs> so this guy, typical Storm Collectibles, all the accessories, nice bright paint job. You're going to get decent articulation in there as well because Storm used the wonderful soft kind of rubber that allows you to move the ball joints around and just, yeah, get in some very athletic martial arts type poses. That always looks great, unless you're some of the Mortal Kombat characters. They could be a little stiff because their costumes kind of restricted them a little bit. Hopefully this guy won't have that trouble, although he is wearing a similar kind of waistcoat sort of thing. So we'll see. The proof will be in the posing. Yeah, and for you King of Fighters fans, you're going to find out pretty soon. Well, I say pretty soon, probably in about a year's time. This mission has been cancelled. I'm giving the orders from now on. Higher Toys have shown off their Dolph Lundgren action figure from Universal Soldier. This kind of caught me by surprise because when I saw it, I assumed, ah, oh, 1 18th scale, Higher Toys. Nah, ah, ah. This is 1 12th, baby, the Lord scale. And it looks okay. I feel the face maybe, I don't know, looks a little bit, a little bit sort of like waxy, a little bit sort of plastic. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just the pictures. But the soft goods, oof. 
Soft goods look terrific. Already, I'm kind of mentally thinking, you know what? One of, one of my Mezco Punisher heads? That would look pretty good on that. So there's a lot of potential there. This guy's going to be about $90, and he's going to be hitting store shelves in the first quarter of 2025. Where are those droid Hot Toys are expanding your Star Wars collection, this time with the droid decars. And they actually look wicked. The engineering that must have gone into putting these together is quite something. You can see all the joints and articulation and the mechanics going on there. That's very impressive. I don't know what that's going to equate to as far as price goes, though. These might be a little bit more expensive. I mean, the droid decars, and yes, I will always pronounce it that way, they're, they're, they're big. They're, they're big, chunky, chunky things. So I imagine it might have a similar big, chunky, chunky price tag to go with it, but if you've got some of your Phantom Menace type characters or anything kind of Clone Wars related, you want to have them flanked by a couple of these, man, if you've got the money and the space for it, then God bless you, because Hot Toys, they got you covered. Hasbro are expanding their Transformers collection with their dramatic capture series. These are sort of diorama sets. It's kind of clever. It's the kind of thing that you can only really do with Transformers. Because we got Optimus Prime and Jazz, but we've also got Teletran 1, which can actually... Uh, convert, transform, if you will. I can't believe that I was doing a segment on Transformers and trying hard to find the word transform. <laughs> These Transformers can convert somehow. So Delatran 1 turns into mainframe, and then you got Prime and Jazz as well. I've been reliably formed in the member chat that these are repaints, but when they're in a pretty set, sex, uh, a pretty thing, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to retake that. <laughs> But when they're in a pretty set like this, then you can sometimes justify a couple of repaints. I gotta remember to edit that out now. <laughs> Somewhere in these woods, in this primal, sensuous... Syndicate are back with their horror movie figures. In the last episode, we covered their pumpkin head that they just revealed, and now we're getting the werewolf from The Howling. This... Looks really cool as well. Going to be about 60 bucks. This is a good time for werewolf characters. We're getting veteran... Well, we got veteran William from Furay Planet. We're getting the incredible looking Darkstalkers style werewolves from Loose Collector. And now we're getting a very movie accurate looking howling werewolf. This is... This is awesome. I love the more sort of spiky, kind of pointed, jagged designs of this character. Very, very awesome. Not sure when he's coming out, but when he does, he'll be in a deluxe box. And hopefully it might be around about time for Halloween because he's going to look great in your kind of Halloween display setup. That's going to look awesome. But if you feel like you haven't got your fill of terrifying werewolves, don't worry. We're getting a mashup. Fresh Monkey Fiction are teaming up with uh, Fure Planet, I guess. And because they're, they're, well, they're getting their veteran William, but in the form of Kilowog Night Hunter. So the same werewolf that we know and love from Fure Planet has been zhuzhed up, changed and tinkered a little bit, and given some amazing looking weaponry. Mainly the minigun. But not just that, he's got the Predator whip wrist blades as well. That's very kind of Rick and Morty. You know, it's like, hey, what kind of weapon do you want? Uh, give me Predator wrist blades. They look amazing. So I don't need this. But I really want it. <laughs> but I won't get it. $84.99, available on Big Bad Toy Store. Ah, just, if you don't even buy it, look at the pictures. They, they just look badass. Something to file under, I don't know what I'm looking at here, is this monstrosity. Why? A, 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 a goose dragon lady? I don't, I don't know what you call this. It's, it, it's from a franchise of some sort. It wasn't just, just from one toy maker's twisted mind. This is Delicious in Dungeon Fallen. Chimera XL size. Yeah, it, it, it looks XL size. This is from the Good Smile Company. So they do make a lot of video game figures. So I'm guessing this is a, a video game, but Delicious in Dungeon. I've never heard of this. Maybe that's a translation. I'm going to have to delve a little bit deeper and do some more research on this weird goose dragon lady. But I'm not going to research too much because 
I don't want this thing haunting my dreams. I know why I am here. It's something only I can do. Sticking with Good Smile Company, we have Figma doing their Legend of Zelda figures. Just a couple of preview images here. We got Zelda herself and we got Ganondorf as well. Big, chunky, chunky figure, that Ganondorf. I like the look of that. I was a big fan of the Nintendo Switch art style. The aesthetic of the Vel Velda? Pfft, the Zelda characters in that. Not going to retake that. They, they look really pretty. So converted into three-dimensional action figure form. I think they look great. They look really awesome on shelves and I'm still tempted. Mm. I keep seeing the Link in a display cabinet in uh, Shinsai Bashi and I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe one day. Nonetheless though, hopefully we'll get some full reveal proper images of these quite soon because they look awesome. It's been a long wait, Solid Snake. I didn't kill your father. And that's not all from Figma. We have a full gallery of a whole bunch of stuff that they have in the works, including stuff that is still waiting for license or approval. But some of these franchises, they're doing Solid Snake. Metal Gear Solid 2 looking Solid Snake. That's really cool. I'm a, I'm a big Metal Gear 2 fan. Well, Metal Gear in general, but I don't have any Solid Snake figures. So that one kind of caught my eye. Then we're getting Skull Knight from Berserk as well. Even if you don't read Berserk, Skull Knight looks amazing. On his horse, with all the battle armor. That's really, really cool. Then they got some other stuff. Uh, they got 2B, I think, from Near Automata. A whole load of projects they're working on. So hopefully we're going to see some proper reveals from these guys very soon. And folks, that does it for the toy news. And now it's time to wrap up this episode with the channel member shout outs. If you want to be a part of this show, you can do by getting a YouTube channel membership so that you can watch these episodes as I film them live. Join in with the group chat, throw some comments my way, and I'll read them out at the end of the episode. Just like Joey B did when he said, speaking of dinosaurs, it looks like Creative B Studios showed some new stuff at Joe Fest. I spotted a never before seen baby mammoth. Man, those guys keep on raising the bar. I'm going to have to look up a picture of that. Diesel said, I decided to go all in on the Heat Boys Mech TMNT. My wallet is in a shambles. Dude, you haven't even begun to think about it because you know they're not just doing the turtles. We're getting Splinter, Shredder, April and Krang as well. But dang, they're going to look amazing. JT, you're saying with regards to the Transformers figures, it's repaints which kind of sucks, but they are cool repaints. So honestly... That does buy a little bit of credit. And also saying, cheers, Dave. Good luck on the edit. Killing it as always with a $5 super chat. JT, thank you so much, man. That genuinely means the world to me. Tom says, with regards to the turtles, they all come with weapons, Dave. And Eastman and Laird drew one turtle each. So this is it. Okay, that now makes a whole lot more sense with the multi-pack there. <laughs> and Rick, Cold Kid says, Rectangular has hinted at Colossus from the Deadpool movie. I'm thinking, if that's the case, maybe a sneaky little Colossus and Juggernaut two-pack? That would be awesome. Juggernaut would be a chonky boy. Tom's also saying, Dave, did you see that Dan Yun is teasing next week's reveal and saying he can't wait for it? I wonder if it's his actual favorite Wolverine. Gosh, I hope so. Because if that Ghost Rider Wolverine is the last one we get, Whew, what a way to finish. <laughs> Matt with two T's. It's odd seeing how the hot dog gets made. Being a producer is tight. You heard it from the producers first. JT also saying, damn, that was the best Power Rangers news item in a while. And Dave just skipped over it. Very fitting. <laughs> That's why I went back and did the Power Rangers statue. You can literally af affect this show in real time. That's always kind of fun. And folks, that does it for the member shout outs. Guys, thank you so much for joining in the chat. That was a whole bunch of fun. It's great fun making this whole thing a little bit more interactive. And that also does it for good news for today. Gang, thank you so much for watching. What did you think about the items covered? Comment below. Let me know. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, then you know what you got to do. You got to join the 6-1 Clicks by clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons. And if you want to go one step beyond in supporting the channel and become a part of this creative process, then you can do by getting a YouTube channel membership. Then you can join me in the daily live streams when I film good news, have your voice heard in the conversation and more times than not, correct me when I inevitably get stuff wrong. <laughs> That's actually really helpful. <laughs> so gang, thank you so much for that. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior.